You're listening to Travel Tales with Fergal. I, 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 I just saw you actually. I'll show you. So it was the front page of the Mur. So that's, okay. I'm in, that's all Ennis crew. I'm yeah. in there with my wife, Emer, and I'm in there. That's me there. Yeah, my, my one was there. The star sent it to me. It was just, I don't know if you can see it. It's pinned up on the yeah, wall yeah. there, but uh, there were just pictures. And they, they out of the blue, the star just sent it on. I don't know, look, man, must have ordered them or something. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, you? Very good, yeah. Just heard me showing Anthony Daly a framed photo of the front page of the Irish Mirror from 1997. And on that front page is a big photo of Anthony holding up the Lee McCarthy Cup and also a picture of me with a load of friends from Ennis, also on the front page, one of my prized possessions. So as you can guess, Anthony is our very special guest today. So, um, Anthony, you're very welcome to the podcast. I was listening to Off the Ball last night and the guys, Joe Kiernan and a couple of the players were talking about, twenty. it was a great uh, interview about 25 years ago and they were yep. talking about, you know, they should be going going up to the collect the do the wave this year you know yeah obviously it'd be the yeah. same for you you know that's it for yeah we and we had great plans made you know all through january and february we were we were having meetings and uh geez some of the meetings turned into great nights tell you the truth <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're a dangerous bunch when we assemble <laughs> but um no uh we we got new suits as well uh and i as i said to the boys there on the uh, we have a obviously a WhatsApp group, and I said, "Look at lads, the positive of this is we'll all have to get a new overcoat <laughs> as well." Now, if the All Ireland is played on the thirteenth of December, so uh, they won't be able to let us out in suits and shirts. So, and that's the beauty as well for of the twenty-five year this year yeah. is that we're all still around, thank God, and hopefully we all, you know, we we would have been over and done with on the eighteenth of August if if we were in a normal year. But management and all the players are still around, which you know you go through a lot of the counties. Uh, are not lucky enough to be able to say that you know they've had tragedies you know and, and um, so we do we, we said that at one of the meetings that we were going to enjoy it and there was a little trip I think proposed maybe down to Portugal for a few days golf uh, but that obviously none of that goes ahead now so look at hopefully if the world returns to normal we might do something with the 97 squad which you had new guys and some great characters like the great Niall Gilligan and a few more you know so Actually. Barry Murphy and lads like that so they could be included in that and, and uh, we might be able to get something together and, and get away for a few days anyway I remember the day after, in 98 after the tour game in, in um, I actually was sitting beside Niall Gilligan's dad for that match in Simple Stadium the late, the late great Mick yeah, yeah. We, such a lovely, such lovely man yeah. very gen- lovely gentleman man. Oh. God, a real gentleman, a real gentleman, yeah, brilliant guy. And I remember um, the day after, it would have been the Monday then, being in, in uh, Six Mile Bridge, and that was the first time I ever was in a bar, and, and they brought out uh, black pudding with a bit of salt. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was oh, yeah. lovely, I have to say. Oh, it, t- t- it tasted like more porter after that. For it is, yeah. <laughs> Why did you think they brought it out? Yeah. <laughs> Asher, the Mondays, look, now, and you just make a point of, of like, you know, you'd be, should be murdered the whole winter and you'd be told stay off the jar and that kind of thing and then once you were fully fit then there'd be no drink like for the four weeks coming up to the Munster semi-final and nothing and then you might win the Munster semi-final and he'd say enjoy yourself tomorrow and that would be a, a license to meet up and it was pre-mobile phone days like so what you do is you might ring Chaplin's house do you know that was the crack back then and they'd get word then to the other lads and someone ring the Tulla crew and Brian Quinn and Jim McInerney would be that was the way it was Bush Telegraph really you know compared to now where you could take a picture of the inside of the pub or the barman and you could say land on <laughs> and you know, you that's know? The and nowadays with, with phones and uh, camera phones oh. it kind of changes the dynamic doesn't it oh flip it it's ruined I tell you well you know what um, when this whole COVID thing for, I'm 50 years of age now and, and for the first time I think I'm nearly glad to be 50 you know it's, you know, it's like phone stuff and you even feel like singing an old song in a pub now to someone with a snaky phone somewhere, isn't there? And next thing it's on a Snapchat and ah, it's just, ah, I don't, I don't, I've, I've daughters, I suppose now that are, are 21, 19, 17 and I, would, I don't envy them, you know, that, that world, I, 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 you know, great memories were nearly better than pictures and videos, aren't they? Yeah. You know, that's, that'd be my attitude, you know, and uh 
are we, you know, that's, that's, yeah, you do, you know, fella doing a bit of black garden in a pub and the next thing the whole country has to see it, you know, and you do nothing majorly out of the way. Look at the other side of it is for a they've saved lives as well, you know, people like on boats and, and caught on mountains and stuff. And, I, and we, we, we have to accept that has been a great progress as well. So, but yeah, I, I, I nearly loved the whole idea. Sometimes when we used to be with the dubs uh, there, we, We'd make them turn off the phones and throw them into that bag, put a sticker on the back of, of their of of their phone and with their name on it, and just put them all in the bag and put them away for three hours, like yeah. just and make fellas talk to each other, you know. And, and uh, yeah, I was six years in Dublin, so you tried everything really, you know, to, yeah. to get them to bond and, and and fight for each other, and you know. I when I was listening back on to that thing on News Talk, you know, they were talking about the twenty five years ago, and I was thinking, I remember when I was in college, I used to share house with guys from all over back in the early 90s and they used to slag me I used to say we were a hurling county <laughs> and uh, I especially had one friend who lived from Burr you know he used to, so I got such great pleasure obviously in 95 because it was like see I told you we are and we always yeah. were you know yeah we are we, and look I, I have no doubt Ferg, that you know especially I can only talk of my memory you know obviously we hear the stories about 55 and you know, 67 and all those years, but like the 70s team, they met that Cork team three in a row. And, and I have no doubt if there was a backdoor even then that we would have, we would have won one of those All-Irelands, you know, and again on to, you know, 81 beating Cork and Limerick beat us in 86. Great game in Cairn. Like we'd been so close so often, I think, you know, but that Munster final was a monkey on our back. And, and once that has been lifted, you know, we went on to win another one ourselves and the lads then, I suppose, who, Maybe grew up watching us and uh, managed to do it in 13. So, um, and, so and great important. hope going forward as well, you know, mm. um, that, that we will never really see famines like that again. But you can't take your eye off the ball either. You, you only look at Cork, you know, they, they, one of the big three, as we'd say, and they've gone now 15 years, you know, without one. So, it, it, you just have to look after the underage. I think it's so yeah. important. And, that's why the likes of Tip and Limerick, I think, at the moment, are probably the favourites in Munster um, most years because their underage has been has been really strong in the past couple of decades, and and they've they've watched that and they've they've reaped the benefits. And in Clare, hopefully, I think certainly our minor team last year and the year before were pretty good, and again this year, I you know you see Flannans winning the Harty Cup as well, and stuff like that is crucially important. I I would think going forward that make sure you stay there because you know we we would always. You know, me and you grew up in a time, I suppose, that we looked at Galway, you know, winning under Cyril Farrell, you know, winning three titles in the 80s. And they hadn't won it for years and years up to that since the 30s. And, and they would have been the same as ourselves till they made the break, same with Offaly. And we would have looked on those as huge. And you still see how long it took Galway from from, from 88 up to, up to 17, you know. So in a, a county like Waterford, sure, we all know Waterford's a hurling county and... And how long they have to go back to fifty nine? I think is fifty nine. Yeah, it's so it's it's it is. Yeah, it can slip easy, but yeah, we were always a hurling county. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> you did go away in those trips, like say ninety five, ninety seven. It must have made it so special to really be able to relax and go with your teammates. Like those trips must. Have, where did you go and on your trips with? Yeah. Kevin? In the nineties. Well, ninety five was a bit controversial because none of us were married, you know, and uh, <laughs> a lot of lads and uh, you know weren't going out with anybody either, you know. So there was a kind of a vote taken, which was a secret ballot, and for the team holiday, there was a vote, secret ballot, I'd say, and uh, to, we had to break the news to those of us with girlfriends that there was no uh, girlfriends being brought to Thailand on the trip, thirteen nights in Thailand, which was fantastic. Probably fun, a unanimous vote, anyway, I'd say. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. To this day, uh, he's never told us. Sherlock Nan just counted the votes and said, "Les, this is the rule." So we don't know who to blame, really. But, but, but in fairness to him, because there were so many of the Clare diaspora in, in in New York and in Boston, you know, we think of places like McGann's in Boston, and uh, they kind of wanted us to go over. So they got together over there with the publicans, and they got together with Jer. Would we bring over the cup? And what turned into two nights in Boston and three nights in New York before Christmas? And all the girlfriends were welcome to go on that. So that was a brilliant, brilliant trip. You know, that was just fabulous. We we actually drove up in a snowstorm 
from Bo- we didn't think we'd make it at one stage. We thought I'd have to book into some motel on the way up, but there was snow plows everywhere, but crack and uh, like minus 12 and 13 over there. And But sure, we all the publicans chipped in to pay for the trip and the accommodation. So it was Delia McCarthy had to be brought to every establishment that had given a few hundred dollars. Yeah. So <laughs> there, was some, there was some mileage, I tell you, done for that one. So How many of you went on the trip? Oh God, I'd say anything up to 70 people went on that really? trip, you know. Wow. Yeah, we're, we're as th- Thailand, maybe only, you know, 35 or that went to Thailand, you know. Yeah, everyone was brought there and a few extras. Kieran McDermott was brought to f- sing a few songs really? as well, you know. Yeah. So that was Asher look. And then Thailand was just great because we were on our own and you could really chillax. And, yeah. you know, there was all sorts of things organized. Uh, um, there was one of the waiters in the hotel, which was, you know, the luxury of the hotel. And it was a funny place because... You know, the, the poverty outside the gate of the hotel and then the the actual luxury of the hotel, you know. But one of the waiters in the hotel played in a local soccer team. So there was a soccer match organised between his team and the Clare team in about, I don't know how many degrees of heat anyway, but too warm for what we had consumed anyway. Uh, and uh, But they were they were beautiful soccer players. Like, I'll never forget it. Um, little but, guys, probably, were they? Yeah, the Thai people, obviously, being yeah. little guys. But we we had we went with a two man up up front with uh, Frank Lohan and Ali Baker, and we beat them three nil from three corners. <laughs> just just Baker just up and knocked it in. Frank, yeah, Frank headed two more in. You know, so it was it was uh, yeah. We we were actually I think myself and Christy Chaplin were the were the two centre halves, and there was no meaning to the kicking. <laughs> but we des- we decided we'd celebrate with them afterwards. They weren't able to cope with us on that either. <laughs> But we brought them out. We brought them out for the evening anyway. You know, they were so low paid over there and we, we got a bit of spending money going and Asher, the crack and, and, and the, the fun and the cracks are just, just brilliant. And then 97, uh, Jared decided on a, a massive, massive he, he used to call it really where we go and obviously he said in 95 famously on the steps of the runway down in Shannon, we wanted to go to some place where there was absolutely no mention of hurling, Fergal, he said. And so it was either Thailand or Tipperary. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't care at the time. He was just who he insulted, you know. Uh, I look at no one from Tip ever took it. There might have been a few people saying that, look, man, we'll get him. But sure, then when we beat him, I suppose in 95 or 97, when we beat him the, the twice, he really, you know, the sky was the limit for the holiday. So we went off to San Diego for five nights, staying up, I think, to uh, Los Angeles for a night, flew out to Hawaii for uh, eight or nine nights and back to Vegas for two nights. (laughs) So I'll tell you, we were rattled and and empty pockets coming home out of that one, I'll tell you. But the girls were all with us on that one, you know, so it was was that's great fun, you know. What was was, was Hawaii like? Amazing there, I'd say, is it? Yeah, like very different. I mean, I would say... Uh, even San Diego as well was kind of very, very strict. For, you know, mm, yeah. you know, compared to Boston, New York, what we had done two years previous, you know, you couldn't get a drink for love nor money after two o'clock in the morning. You know, yeah, yeah. Very, you know, in Boston, New York, you can imagine you could have stayed out all night, like you know, and fellas were coming back at all hours of the morning back to the hotels and you know going lock-ins and stuff. But whereas you know they had no culture really of Irish down there. You know, the, mis- the only mistake we made on that trip is we can go to San Fran for the first five days, you know, where, where there would have been plenty of Irish lads to look after us. Particularly clear uh, people, a lot of clear oh, people. Oh, loads, sure. Martin Max, Paul Ballone would have done us <laughs> for <laughs> five days. But look, uh, it was still a brilliant trip in terms of, like, to get to Hawaii. I mean, I'm not going to be going back to Hawaii, I put it to that way, like, you know, bar my, my six numbers come in some Wednesday or Saturday night. So it was, it was fantastic. We were right on Waikiki Beach then. You literally went out the back door of the hotel and you were on Waikiki Beach. So yeah, that where you were on the jet skis. I remember hearing a story about you. Was that you? That uh, no, no, that was Thailand. That was Thailand. <laughs> that was Thailand. We were on a beach, yeah, in Pattaya as well. Yeah, that was dangerous stuff. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ! I fell off the back of my one, and and uh, I think it was Fergal Hagerty and Brian Lohan, and Lohan said, "Go on over and frighten the shit out of him." Like you know, but then Hagar kind of lost control. Uh, and like the jet, the jet ski passed my face by about four inches. <laughs> like if it hit me, it was like it was game over. Like you know these two men jet skis. But sure, oh, yeah, you you just think back and say, how do we all come back in one piece? Like you know, <laughs> there was a few broken bones and stuff like that. All right, like you know, with fellas doing diving tricks and stuff like that and all sorts of stuff. But uh, look, sure, uh, we all got back in one piece. 
Yes. And tell us, did you um, did you go in all star trips? Any of the all star trips? Or? Yeah, just just one. I, I I was lucky enough to get the three all stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, for but they weren't they weren't an every year thing uh, mm-hmm. back in the nineties. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, and they only became became an every second year thing around the late nineties. Whereas the football all stars would go one year and the hurling all stars would go the following year. So. Yeah, we got one one five day trip to Boston, which was the ninety eight, which I got an All Star in, and the ninety nine All Stars played each other over in Boston in, in an exhibition game. Jesus, that was some exhibition, all right, I tell you. But uh, it was great fun, yeah. Because I uh, look at you between the two squads, because obviously you that young Cork team came along in ninety nine, and and Kilkenny and, and themselves played in the final. And 98, there was obviously a lot of the Offaly lads and ourselves and, and a few of the Waterford lads as well who would become prominent around then. And, and you know, to get to know fellas like that, you know, the, the Tony Browns and who we had spent a nice bit of 98, 98 fighting with, you know. <laughs> but, you know, you know, just to get away then around December and, and, and be able to relax. with. And I, know, I didn't know Tony Brown would say Ken McGrath at all. And just, we became great friends to this day. Like, you know, they'd be... Like on my own, my own podcast, there I would have done a you, great you're not one. Garrett is on those trips, then. You're, 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 ah, no, Cody was our manager, and uh, you know who's. I don't think Jimmy Barry flies. He goes to Clamell every year, right? Jimmy Barry, <laughs> but uh, it was Teddy Owens was the Cork trainer, so Teddy was over the '99 uh, uh, team, so. Yeah, and that's all. No, no, no. Cody okay. just us off. Like, you know, I think I said to him before the match, like about fifteen minutes to do me now, Brian. You, you have a few subs there that are younger than me now. You could, you could be throwing them in. So he says, just give me the nod, you know, and you want to come off. So I think, I think I stuck it out for about twenty minutes, and I, I just put up the end. Well, I look at you know, those games. No one's tackling too hard, and you know, what if the Irish crowd that come along to see as well? They come along to see the really good goals and. Uh, the, you know, the, the bit of skill and fellas trying things, you know. So back then you would have had fellas, you know, like Jodine and fellas like that flicking balls over fellas' heads. And as a defender, you weren't really meant to tackle that hard anyway, you know. So, yeah, the score being something like 7, 29 to 9, 22, you know. So, yeah, but no, you were, I am. A trip like that, you were completely off the hook, you know. I heard more, a great story, more, but uh, I know it was at that trip where... um Davy and Dona Logue were, were on it, and the deal was Davy would do the first half and Dona Logue would do the second half, and then Davy yeah. comes off at half time with a limp, injured, you know. Yeah, that actually so, happened. Uh, they, they were desperate rivals around then. Like, this, this was the winter of '99, if you can imagine, you know. So, Cork obviously had beaten us, and, and I think um, Don Logue got the all star, I think, in '99, and uh. Davy thought he should have got it like, you know, it's, it's like it's only one goalkeeper position and that time they were able to jingle up the backs, if you know what I mean. Like you, you like I got I got all stars at number two, number four, and number seven, you know. So that'll tell you like they could they could our team two, five, and seven. So they could there might be eighteen backs nominated for six positions, but obviously there was only three keepers. But uh, yeah, there was fierce rivalry between the two of them, but subsequently obviously they've 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 worked together then coach and McClare and I, and I know Don Lowe gives a hand in in Wexford as well at times and uh, so they're great they're great mates now you know so yeah it's gas the way it turns around as well but yeah no Davey was, wasn't letting on to any of the Clare people that came to see him in goal that uh, he was being taken off and, and being substituted because he was bad <laughs> and there was a few goals gone in because there was no backs trying to assist or help him out at all like you know yeah he did he got a, he got a touch of a hamstring alright on the way off <laughs> I heard um, I think it was this week on your podcast that you said um that 99 was the worst, your worst loss, or the one you felt the most. I was surprised. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I tell you now, because 98 kind of just happened for you, you know, it just, it, look, what happened the first days, we were very lucky to get a draw, you know. Um, like, we got a late free, which, to say the least, I'd have been disappointed if I was an Offaly defender who was given against me. Now, the Offaly crowd meant in, like, it wasn't the screed of a free, but I would have said... 50-50, like, you, you get them sometimes, you don't get them. And a lot of the time with refs, when you're a pint down, they'll give you those ones. And, and, and James, he banged it over, thinking, look, we hurled great the second day, but we, we did slacken, and they came back at us. And what happened, everyone knows about. You know, and then the third day, look, we shouldn't have played the third day. We should have played the third day, but we shouldn't have played the following week. You know, I had no problem playing, but get a week, you know, and get us a chance to freshen up the bodies and, and go again, because... You know, we'd had Cork, we'd had two massive battles in Waterford as well, like, and 
you know, they had they had lamely kind of stepped out of Leinster really when you think about it, you know. So they were coming in into their prime at that stage where we were so there was the, the huge mistake was playing the following week. But look, we had to play it anyway. So and like look, Joe Dooley hit an unreal day the following week, which Joe was capable of doing uh Stephen Byrne in goal as well, like two saves near the end of it. You know, we could have won the third day, like and I, I look at I, I, that just happened. I don't blame Jimmy Cooney. I don't, I don't really blame anyone. I, the only bit of blame I'd have was the way we handled the third day that we didn't get out of Dublin, get home, get get away from there, and say, "Well, we'll see. We might play." No, we would have had to play. You know, but let's say we said, "Look, we'll push back the All Ireland there. We'll we we'll play all right, but we did, we feel an injustice has been done to us. So get out of Dodge and buy an extra week and just really refresh ourselves and." And be ready for Torless then. Um, but ninety nine for me, we we were overconfident in the monster final, right? Um, and that young Cork team, no, oh, like we were missing James. He obviously had a broken hand. Then Ollie had taken over the match. Jesus, Ollie was nearly beating him on his own the second half and rolled the ankle and had to go off. And then Cork got momentum and, and got a goal and a point near the end. And like they won fair play to him. No, not I wouldn't take away from Cork all Ireland now at all, but. Subsequently, then we had to go to the back door then and play Galway, and I think I think we were eleven points down against Galway, and like made a massive comeback to get a draw. And then, as we used to do in replays back then, we came out and, and blew Galway away in the replay, and we kicked Kenny. And like, to be honest, with Kenny at that stage, like I just felt we were better than them, you know. And oh, geez, six seven years later, you wouldn't have been saying that, like you know. But God, that day, like we just we just never really got going, and like put this. For me, if we had got over Kakenny with what happened at the other side, Cork came through against Offaly. And if we had got back at Cork after losing the Munster final to them, I tell you, on that wet day as it turned out to be in Dublin, I'm not so sure that Cork team would have been bringing Liam McCarthy. Mac Landers obviously on the pod with us. You know, he was captain. And I, as I said, I don't begrudge it at all to them. They won it fair and square. They were Munster champions and Ireland champions. I love Jimmy Barry. He was our manager. But... I'll tell you, if we met him in that final with revenge on our minds, uh, and it might have been a final hurrah as well for a lot of us, you know, so, yeah, I think we'd have nearly won it. So that, that one disappointed me because we didn't play well against Kilkenny. We made we were defensively poor. We did things we normally used, used not do, really, you know. Um, so, yeah, that was as much painful. And maybe it was just a fact as well. I, I, I was feeling the end coming as well, for you know. And actually, 2000 then was my last year on the team. I was a sub in 201 and gave up then in 202. So, yeah, um, yeah maybe, that, maybe that's the reason why, because I thought it was another great chance. And I suppose we had, Ger- we had persuaded Gerard to stay going as well. And we all made a real mess. I think we made a bigger effort in 99 than we did in 98, even in terms of, you know, commitment and training. And, and maybe we overdid it even, you know. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that looks sure. You you no regrets really when you started when I started and how low it was at that stage and exactly. where where it went to you don't really have too many regrets. And you know when you're like growing up and you're a hurler and then you're playing inter county, like did you feel like you missed out on travelling going abroad or doing the, the summers away or not? Or? Yeah, and I was probably sorry I didn't do it maybe in the early nineties, you know, and because like my first couple of years playing like we were beaten probably one year for sure uh, we were beaten the 29th of May you know uh, but of course I had dropped out of college and got a job in the bank in Ennis and you know like you thought of taking two months where were you going to get two months holidays but there was one of the years alright I think it was 93 I think some crowd in Boston asked me would I go for maybe five weeks and I actually had if I took maybe a week out of the following year's holidays I had it and I I said it to Martin Coffey, my manager at the time, who was a great hurling man, tip man as well, Nina man. Um, I said, would it be a runner? Like, and he says, All right, yeah. He says, look, Jesus, it's a chance of a lifetime. He says, look, would they look after you? Like, I says, yeah, they'd give me a job and they'd give me a few quid to go and um, I'd have to hurl for, I don't know, can't think of the name, I don't know, Boston anyway. And um, I'll tell you what, I just, Clare Castle were back training and I'd have been going for five weeks and I think, I had missed the first round for the, uh, and it was knockout and uh, I, I didn't want to go to be honest with you. Yeah. That was it was the heartache of, of of missing for the Magpies and that was just too strong for me and uh, I suppose by 
by the Wednesday I decided and I rang the guy who had made contact with my cousin Pat and Ennis, Pat Daly, the counsellor. Pat had come down to the house on the Monday and he said, look, I got a call from an old buddy of mine from Boston to know what you go over. So I rang Pat on the Wednesday and I said, Pat, I won't. I, I said, look, I, I could get off all right, I think, but uh, the old club would be too much of a draw for me. You know, and Clare Castle were strong. We, subsequently, we didn't win the championship. I, didn't think, I think we were beaten in the first round. But uh, no, sure, that, that was always, a, 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 you know, if you were a county player and you were going off on the club lads, for me, it would have been a blow. Like, you know? mm. and Where did you yeah. go for your honeymoon? Yeah, we went to Cancun in Mexico, yeah, except for yeah, we, we booked the wedding for the Saturday after the final because, well, I had no idea we were going to be in the final. But, I mean, the second Sunday or Saturday in September was a good day for a wedding anyway. Uh, and if we did win the All-Ireland, it would have been a week after the All-Ireland. We knew the date of the All-Ireland. And uh, so if we booked it for July or June, there'd be no chance of a honeymoon <laughs> if we were still there. And... You know, we were we we had won it in '95. We had been agonisingly beaten in '96, so we were hopeful and we were training very hard. So, yeah, we booked it for that day. Booked the hotel and that. Told nobody, of course. But yeah, subsequently, as it went on, sure, we were get we had monster one, and then invitations had to be sent out, and the whole country knew coming up to the final, and it was nearly cocky, cocky me for for book booking it, but sure. It was only trying to keep everyone happy. We were doing it that way. And uh, yeah, we, we headed off. But yeah, the, boy, the boys were forced to play the first round the following Saturday, I think, on the Sunday. And um, ah, the county board had no real option as well because if you remember, in 97, the Miners won as well. So the clear fixtures were way behind. And uh, yeah, you know, again, it was pre-mobile phones. So trying to ring my poor mother who was tuned into Clare FM and trying to get news of the match. And I must have rang seven times while Alicia was sudden herself by the pool. Uh, so eventually she says, hang on, hang on, Martin is pulling up. She said, my brother, you know, and uh, so he came in and he put me on well. I said, he said, a draw. And he said, Fergie Tui got sent off. She said, and uh, Stephen Sheedy as well got dropped because he had a few points, I think, on the tourist there Friday night. So he said, Jesus, we were blessed. He said, John Pine got a free from 90 yards. I said, when is the replay? And he said, next Saturday, oh, Jesus. I said, I'm not staying out here now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, to go down to the pool and say, do you want the good news or the bad news? And I leave speed from Kimmy at that stage, you know. So, but I says, I, I ain't staying out here for the replay. Eilish. So, yeah, the club flew us home, I think, through Heathrow on the, on the Friday. And I wasn't any good, but I was there on the Saturday. I think it was a help to, maybe to be there anyway. And, uh, yeah, we actually had a great weekend afterwards. We, we, had, we had moved into a cottage because we were building a house in Ennis. Well, it was one of the, the new housing estates in Ennis and, and the house wasn't ready. So we'd moved into a cottage in Bellier. And yeah, because we had made the gesture to come home. I think we, even though there was training on the Monday, the, the Sunday was declared a kind of a, a bank holiday <laughs> Sunday for, for us. And uh, yeah, we, we had a good weekend. But yeah, she, fairness to her, I kind of knew she was a keeper at that stage, all right, mm-hmm. when she came home. <laughs> it's, a classic, <laughs> you know? it's a classic G honeymoon story. <laughs> yeah, and to, and to make it worse then, the poor old Sparrow had booked his uh, honeymoon for, for later on, uh, maybe a month or six weeks later, and we were in the semi-final. So he, he had to do something. He was, he was also in Cancun. So, yeah, the pressure was heaped on him then to do the same thing. He had to, he had to cut it short by a couple of days as well, yeah. So, look, uh, anyway, <laughs> the GA widow, as they say. Yeah. And tell us... Since you've retired, are, do you go abroad for sporting other sports? Like, are you interested in, do you go away with soccer or anything else? Or? Ah, look, yeah, no, not really, except Pink to Cheltenham and entry a few times. Yeah, for, yeah. You know, uh, I suppose the, the Celtic Tiger, I suppose, was as good as all. We hardly missed those events. Mm-hmm. But uh, I suppose that, that quite does a fair bit, you know, in terms of blowing money and stuff like that but yeah what I would be would be an old Tottenham Hotspur fan for my sins which is a life sentence obviously um, so I haven't been to the new stadium yet now and was swearing I was going this year now but whether we'll get a chance to go or not but yeah I've been to the, to the Wembley a few good few times and the old White Hart Lane quite a bit and uh, yeah look would have, would have gone away with the Dubs of course as well We when we won the league I think we went to uh, New York uh, for a few nights uh, and then we went to Vegas when we won the Leinster Championship. I know you obviously from Clare but also I, I have a hotel, Hearns Hotel in Tipperary and you come to us every year for the coursing. Sure which, do. You know, 
you've had many great times there, haven't you, in, in, with the coursing? Uh, unreal, Fergal. We we just were blessed. We, we're in a very lean patch at the moment now. <laughs> the ATM, we can't seem to... even We've invested a good few bob on, on high-quality bread, pups and that, but... We just uh, we just can't buy a winner at the moment. But look, Ash or look anyone that had our run of success for God, the very first dog we bought or won the Derby, you know, Marty's gang, and that was just incredible for us. And then his sons were were great dogs as well. In particular, uh, Marty's Blaze and Marty's Destiny, both of them would have uh, Marty's Delight was another great one. But both of those would have ran up the Champion Stakes final uh, in subsequent years, and and. Marty's Blaze, for instance, won five cups around the country. Uh, Destiny won four, you know, and, and both went, went to the final in Clonmel, they didn't win their finals, but great, great dogs as well. But uh, yeah, we, yeah, I love the course in the start. Ennis St. Clark Castle is a great club, you know, and um, uh, we, there's a great tradition there, you know, yourself. And yeah. I suppose uh, my uncle, Holly, would have been big into it. And uh, he's a big hurling man as well, I suppose. And that would have... Uh, been bred down towards as my my eldest brother Michael had a big interest and in, and and when we got the chance Michael had 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 a few bad ones uh, before that but uh, I suppose and I hadn't much time up to that with the hurling you know I still always go to our own meeting and try and sneak to Clanmel for a day or two <laughs> maybe get one night overnight even looking at it allowed that <laughs> um, but but uh, yeah once I was finished it was always kind of a dream to to buy a pup and have a go and God for the first one to be you know to run. Every course he ran, he won, you know. And then that was in 96, wasn't it? No, it, it, no. it was 2002. Oh, 2002. 2002, 2002, 2002 for, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I was finished with the hurling. Oh, I was okay. finished. Oh, yeah, just the, just the year I quit, actually, you know. So, yeah, yeah, it was it was, it was was magic. And uh, I was able to enjoy loads of stuff that year. Claire got to the Ireland final and I was able to go along as a supporter as well and mm-hmm. soak, so, soak in all that stuff as well, you know, so... Yeah, that was great. Jeez, we love Clan Mail. It's a pilgrimage for us, you know. And uh, we, the crack, sure, you know yourself, the crack with it sure is more than the course. One night in the bar, in the residence bar, and you were in one corner, the Ty Keneally was doing a, an Irish jig in another corner, and Mick Galway was out in reception. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it, ah, yeah. Really Several good. years there with Mickey English and Pat Fox and Niall Quinn mm-hmm. and... You know, you meet them all down there, you know, and Tomas Mulcahy was there the year we won the, the derby. I remember him, him joining us in the sing song. Yeah, and, and you know yourself at your place, like it's kind of a, it's it's a Clanmel Central in lots of ways. Yeah. <laughs> Hearns is the spot to, yeah. you, everyone winds up there nearly anyway, don't, don't they? Exactly. You know, so that's great. Or look at you. Our room, as we say, is kind of never locked. You know, <laughs> you said to the boys, "Look, bring your money, lads, just in case." But no one, that course and crowd wouldn't rob you anyway. They're just so they're the mm-hmm. salt of the earth people. But you just say, "Bring your wallet and just leave the door open." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you know, lads could be staying out the road for you know three or four miles in a B and B. But if they kind of maybe had overindulged in a few pints, for <laughs> they'd be allowed up to room one hundred at the top of the stairs for a quick <laughs> kip for an hour and a half. We get them up again, then bring them back down, you know. And uh, often availed of that facility myself, I have to say. So, but it is, yeah. It, ah, look, it's, it's great fun. But uh, you nearly need a week off afterwards, all right. You would. <laughs> Actually, speaking of Room 100, I remember uh, one year you rang me, f- you rang me from Room 100. Do you remember that? You, uh, there was an old lock what? in the toilet, which probably hadn't been used. In a, there was two locks, but it was an old one, probably 100 years old. And you managed yeah. to close it. So you rang me. Yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't get out. You're stuck. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That was really the only lock we wanted in that room was one from the <laughs> toilet, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, ah, look, sure, look, there's, ah, there's a million stories from there, much of which, even when I wrote my book, couldn't be told. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you couldn't be hanging fellas out to dry on the crack from Clamel, but, you know, what, what went on in Clamel stayed in Clamel always anyway. That was always our way, except usually the rule of thumb was if you, if you ate a dinner around seven o'clock in the evening, you were grand. But at times, if the crack was good at around half six in some place on tour, the dinner was often skipped. And then you were in trouble about half eleven, twelve, you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know, sure, look, still, still looking forward to it again in February, even though I used to love the, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday mm-hmm. format because being a GA guy, the Saturday and Sunday now are kind of tough going, you know, because I'd always be covering a game or at a game and, 
So this year, I think it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So I'll probably only get down for Sunday, Sunday night, Monday. But, you know, when you kind of reach my age now, Ferg, that's nearly enough for you at this stage, you know, because coming home as well, when we get back to Clarecastle, usually there's a stop off as well and a, a farewell to lads. Because that's, it's really, I know we have the Irish Cup maybe two weeks after, but Clonmel is the highlight of the year, really. And it's kind of a farewell to lads. Uh, your course and buddies often you might meet some of those lads again for ages you know, I know. But, uh, yeah sure we love the game we love the game I know a lot of people don't agree with it but they're entitled to their opinion on it and while it's legal I think we, we still love it with the dogs muzzled now and, and the hairs toes are everything you know yeah. it's, it's a test of, the, of your dog you know more than anything else and, and the hairs are you know the hairs are so valuable to us uh, and, and so you know the hairs obviously thrive more in coursing preserves than in any other part of, of, of the country. So, and mm-hmm. that has been proven uh, in studies over the years. So look, long may it continue. It'll be my attitude anyway. So. Yeah. And through the connection with the hotel, when you were Clare manager, you, you brought the team a few times. And I was just thinking yeah. about it this morning. Clare, Clare have never lost when they had breakfast in Hearns Hotel. Including yeah, the dinner. 21s. The wonderful yeah, and, Ireland. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think that cut the word came out from when I was in charge with the, with the twenty ones that that was a that was a clear spot in Clonmel kind of and and uh, you'd be looked after well I remember one famous one uh, I think it was the last round of the league and we had to beat Watford in Watford um, to stay up but that's all we kind of wanted to do you know at the time we I think it was ninety six maybe and we'd been beaten narrowly in two or five or two two or six I should say we'd been beaten narrowly by Cork in two or five so the goal was the All Ireland not the league with due respect to the league um, but we we still didn't want to go down to Division two and we had to go and play Waterford and Walsh Park and um, we were coming back to you for the dinner as well afterwards and uh, but you said would I throw the drop of wine for the lads. And so I said, go on. <laughs> I think we lingered a bit. <laughs> so the lads thought this was royal treatment altogether. But uh, uh, yeah, we, we, yeah that, keep that record, kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's, that's like, a winning record. But you know, you're great with, like, with that. Um, you know, I, I read about you, like say in 98, going up the West Coast of Clare before the championship started, after the Cork game, and going to Liscanner and having pints. And that's not something that teams are doing now. You know what I mean? Or even during the summer, Sean Boylan's documentary. And they headed yeah. over to England before, in between Scotland, the replays. Scotland, yeah. Scotland, yeah. After the third match, they went to Scotland, just had a booze up. Yeah. Ah, look, that, that 98 one was, you know, was really just saying to Ger, look, we had, we had seven weeks to play Cork, I think. And Cork had beat you know, the league semi-final. And, and uh, I said, look, Will you get us a few bob out of the fund, or whatever it was there, the holiday fund we used to call it, uh, and get us an old minibus there, a uh, twenty-six seater or one of them, and uh, no one will have a pint for seven weeks. I guarantee you. I said, you know, so he says, right, no problem, taking us done. So got the word out to all the boys to be. Uh, I think we used to drink in the rocks there that time, Eamon Fitz's place, and uh, everyone was there. The bus was outside, and we bait up the coasts, up to Lynch and onto the scanner, and eventually we all. We did a bit of a back room in Joseph McHugh's and got another great course in house, obviously. And we, we went in there and, and we just vowed to each other that no man would touch it. And, and we, we, we put one over on Cork in seven weeks' time. And by God, did we? We, you know, we gave him a right trim and, you know, so yeah, but that was Jer as well, though. You know, that was the management. And I think, look, we're coming back around to that kind of way of thinking as well, for getting for a time there around the mid you know, 2010 up to 2015, 16, I think there was kind of that attitude if, geez, if we had a point at all, we'd drop dead or something or we it would cost us a goal two weeks later in, in a Munster Championship match. But I think it's come round. I think the dubs very much, the five in a row dubs team, Jim, Jim never had a problem with, you know, and I often met them in Dublin, you know, fellas like Stephen Cluxton and you'd swear, look, having a couple of beers, and Jim Gavin's attitude was, if, if it affected you on Tuesday night at training, well, then you had problems because you'd be dropped. But if you wanted to relax and have a couple of beers uh, and you could perform on the Tuesday night in training, no issue. And um, I think, you know, we're very much looking at rugby and, and, and soccer on that as well, where you know, we don't want some of the soccer incidents, I think. But we, you know, I, I think there's nearly a, a complete somersault on that where, 
and we're looking at this year as well where we really enjoyed the club championship for and, and um the change round and and you know lads win a game they're not playing for two weeks again they have a couple of beers together they go again they go back recover maybe on the Monday night with a swim because we've had such good weather Mount of, Mount of East Clare teams that have been back in West Clare swimming on Monday evenings and, and, and getting the bodies ready for Tuesday to go and train hard again and you know I think look I, n- I never saw a problem with it I, I tell you the truth back in the 90s um, famously in 95 the Sunday before, uh, I wouldn't have even had a car. And Eilish had a car, my my wife now, and, and uh, we were only going out together and we'd go back to Loop Head nearly and we'd drink. She might have a glass of beer and I'd have two pints, three max, and we'd go back to Innes, have something to eat and drop me home. And look, Anne would say to me the Tuesday night, did you go for the couple? I did. It's a, <laughs> and I remember him saying to me after the 95 final that there was one or two lads he said, why didn't you bring so-and-so with you last Sunday? <laughs> you know, <laughs> just because like, he, he just said, like, you were just so relaxed. And, and I said, look, it was vital. I thought, just to get away from it all, not talk hurling, just to go in with the base. We weren't that well known even back then anyway, so you wouldn't. And then the old pub we used to go to, uh, Keaton's in Kibaha, uh, they wouldn't bother you back there either. And do you know what? F- fabulous and all as it was then. Later on that year, myself and a buddy of mine got a chance to bring back the cup there yeah. and, and didn't even tell them we were bringing it. Uh, and it was only about, it was a Sunday night um, and I had the Monday off and my buddy was home from, from the UK and uh, we brought in the cup. And I tell you, from Keaton's in Kilbaha with about 15 people there on a Sunday night to the place being mobbed about an hour later. <laughs> <laughs> it was magic, you know. So, yeah, look. Yeah, uh, great times and yeah, my attitude there would be look at if it's getting in the way of things for you and you can't look at you can't be in nightclubs, we all know that that sort of thing. And you know, within reason, I think if you're fully fit and you're ready to go, um I'd no issues as a manager with that. I let go lads off the panel because they couldn't control it. Tell you the truth, for, for the fellas, you know, I would give them a yellow card maybe and then one yellow and that was it. You got a yellow and then you got a red. I'm sorry. Good luck and good lads as well. And, you know, I didn't fall out with any of them either. You know, they said, fair enough. You gave me my chance and I didn't take it. And that was always my attitude. I went, same with the dubs. I let go good lads. Um, but they were on kind of two strikes and you're out. And, and that was the way it was, you know. And that was never for having a pint or two. But it was for completely, you know, going off on binges and, and not turning up for training on a Tuesday night. That was that was a no-go for me, you know. So, yeah, look, not a big deal for me. You know? If you'd close your eyes and take four deep breaths and allow yourself to think of your happy place, where would that be? Um, oh, it'd be, it'd be probably, it's gone now, it's still a pub. <laughs> It's the old Navins in Clarecastle, I think, when, when Mrs. Navin was alive. You know, we used to just go there and she'd look, she was like a second mother to us all and she'd look after us and uh, that was a great place to be. You know, you know, that was a traditional spot to go the day after winning something and we were lucky enough to win a few championships while I was playing. And yeah, geez, that was the days of magic we had there, you know, the Mondays. They weren't supposed to be Mondays. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that was great, you know. Yeah, so that, yeah, I suppose... I'd have a million things for I could think of, you know, you know, going up collecting cups, I suppose, and Morty's gang winning derbies and loads of stuff. But yeah, I think that that was always a kind of a thing that it was it was achieved, or else even if we lost, we were there together, and there was a sense of great unity in that, and uh, you know, not being drunk or anything, just maybe having your first point or two and meeting the lads and just being there together. I think there was a great sense of peace about that somehow, you know. Uh, yeah, that, that would be for me. It's it's now Kate O'Reilly's, which was our maiden name. And uh, a great friend of, of ours, uh, who I won two or three championships with, Paddy Quinn, runs it now. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, Anthony. Lovely. And I'll see you in February. I would ask if you could please subscribe to Apple Podcast, so a new episode will appear in your library every week. I would also really appreciate if you could leave a rating and a review as it helps others to discover this podcast. To find out who's on every Tuesday, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Travel Tales with Fergal. Stay safe and keep dreaming of future travels. Travel Tales with Fergal.